Is that good? Yeah. Let's check. Oh my God, did we do it? That would be amazing. Okay. Ah! Okay. Can you guys hear me? So that is love. Yes. Can you guys hear us? Can you just somebody type yes, we can hear you and see you, or no, we can't hear you and see you? Yes. Great. You can hear and see us. Yes. Great. How are you guys doing? How's everybody? It's been a week since our last vlog. Vlog. What has happened in the meantime? Um, not much. Exercising and cooking. Yes. Great. Um, so this vlog today will be dedicated um, to walking. There weren't really that many, there weren't any questions um, for us from the last vlog. So we will just get right into walking um, and talk about, first of all, how walking work for, works for us in tango and then why it's so important because all the time you hear oh in tango you need to walk you need to practice your walk you need to practice your walk and not a lot of the times we understand why that is so do you think we have somebody that has some question about walking yeah we have a bunch of questions but we'll address them as we're as we go okay. as we go yeah so why is important walking because at least for us the understanding that we have is the um, the um, the complexity of the walk of the tango walk is what you kind of have all the components to make everything else work so if you walk well meaning if you have control over your walk then most likely you have control over all the other figures that you do when you're dancing. The biggest issue that people have a lot of the time is that they practice their walking a lot, but they don't understand how component, components of the walk apply to everything else, which is more complex that we do, like yeah. turning or other things like that. Which the, some of the important things for walking for us, first of all, is uh, dancing in general is managing your access. So your access is one of the most important things. And in the walk, let's say if we, for saying for now, if we divide it in two different parts, you have walking with your access, and then we have walking with... By creating uh, energy. By creating energy. And then when you mix them, then it's another category for saying. So we'll kind of show you different walks, and then we'll show you walks in between. Um, so hopefully you will be able to see a distinction in terms of what we're doing. Get there, let me see the camera yeah. for you. Okay. Don't stand so far. There you go. Very good. So, uh, first we like to think about the idea, and this is something that is important for us when you're learning in the beginning the walk. A lot of the big uh, problems in teaching uh, or learning tango is that we, we all somehow go to the idea of shape. How does it look? Like that's we it. want to dance it. Right, it's like when you go and you take a salsa class, you want to look like the salsa guy. You know what you're doing. Right, yeah. and with tango it's the same and with everything else it's the same. So, the biggest um, misunderstandings about that is that comes from the, the look of tango and one of the, the looks, let's say, for many people is when you had the extension 
and then the walk, extension, and then you move your axis, etc. That's actually is really hard to do from the beginning, uh, to coordinate together, and that is actually uh, you coordinate with your partner correctly. This walk is also very much stylized. It has an emphasis on a particular look or shape that makes it look like tango. But when we first start, if that's how we start, then we have some difficulties. Um, so we'll show you how we think about it, uh, like how our distinctions are. No. Yeah. So the first thing that we're going to show you is just walking with the axis, which is how we would always teach people to walk in the beginning when they first start dancing. So walking with the axis is literally moving from your foot, your entire body, as one thing. Same thing, backwards, it goes forward. You see, we're not trying to create an extension. We're just moving our whole body. It can happen in open embrace and it can happen in closed embrace. If I move from the right place, we always have space. You get the space and then the guy walk. Extend the leg back and walk. Extend the leg back and walk. So we end up having that, we end up learning that we have to always, the tempo walk is extension first, then you walk. Extension first, then you walk. And it's again that, it will be if you go on the idea of the shape. But if you really understand this, a lot of the things it's like, that I can only do that. There are many different ways that we can move depending on the movement, depending on the music, depending on the partner, depending on what we need. So the first thing for us is you need to learn how to move, not how to try to accomplish a shape. So the most important thing for us in the beginning is that people start to understand that they have a standing leg, and that standing leg governs movement. And the easiest way that we use our standing leg is when we're walking. When we're walking, we use our standing leg, we push the ground, we use our ankles and we move the whole axis of the body forward. If you engage a standing leg right away, then you also inform your partner that you're moving. So you don't need to have these um, sort of uh, conventions about extension of the leg. Um, this, this extension of the leg without any feeling that the leg must extend becomes a problem later on because we don't always necessarily walk backwards. From that position, we can go in any direction. So if I already prepare the back extension, then I'm sort of predetermining where my leader is going to go. And that's, uh, that's, that's really not a good idea if we want to have the idea that we're really moving together. So the first way that we think about walking is moving the whole axis from the standing leg by articulating the ankles. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing that we teach always to the beginners, and we don't teach anything else for about six months, eight months, a year, depending on how well how, how people are aware of their bodies. This is again, for example, this is an example if we only use the axis. Say we're dancing close to open wrist. So this is only moving the axis. That you see, and you see JC2 in the way. For all of this that we're doing, We don't really need to create any projection or to do anything else, anything special in a way. We just move together from, from the ground using our feet and we move the entire axis. Yeah. So this is sort of the first thing. The, there, was a question, there was a question about what else there, it's important about walking. So yes, walking has some other things that are really important. It's difficult to only move your axis if you're not on top of your axis, meaning that your body is not straight. So any kind of leaning creates problems in moving this way. It's just not as efficient. So some things that become important for walking is our posture. If we don't have good posture, so good posture just facilitates walking with ease because it's easier for our bodies to be grounded, to be on top, to be relaxed so that when we move, we actually can move from the foot and we're moving the whole body forward and back. So, can I give them a little example about the idea of the axis, why the walk is so important? No, I, I think we should just talk about the walk. And oh, okay. have to, like, yeah. So, so that's like a, a prerequisite for being able to walk. 
Another prerequisite for being able to walk is also understanding your body enough to understand where you're moving from. So if you are unaware that with, uh, what, like where the movement begins, if you think that the movement begins from your free leg, or if you think that your movement begins from your chest, then you're gonna have a problem because you won't be giving the information to your partner which tells them, hey partner, you should also walk with me. So we'll show you that. So for example, a lot of the time when we learn the idea of projection, we learn by ourselves, we find a line, or they tell us to find a line, we project with the leg, we make it beautiful, and then we run for the way. Project with the leg, and run for the way. That's beautiful when you do it by yourself, but the problem becomes how you tell the other person to extend the leg. And this is when it causes a problem that if I only do that myself, see, she's not moving anywhere, so what ends up happening? Oh no, your chest has to move forward. So then it ends up happening that when I move my chest, every time I move my chest, she knows that she has to move. So move how correctly, like thinking that my chest is doing that. Okay, so let's say now I'm in an opening brace. When I do that, she moves so it kind of works. And she knows that she has to extend herself. She, has, she needs to memorize that. Go ahead and memorize that. Good. So then, then it becomes a problem. When did I want her to only move her legs? When did I want her to move her whole body? And when did I want her that I only want to come close to her? So then we start to have to have different techniques to be able to understand that. If every time I think like, okay, my chest is telling her to go, right, and then she has to move herself, then it causes a problem on the idea that, okay, so the projection is causing what? Like, how do I tell her to project? So see, again, projecting is not wrong, it's just how we do it. So if we back up to the idea of moving, we were thinking that from one leg, we just push up and we move to the other leg. So we're moving the whole axis, so we're using our ankles and our feet. So I still want to do the same thing. For her to move all the way, I need to create that. So if I'm here and I want to project, I still have to do the same thing. So we're going to change the leg. Go ahead, so keep going on the axis. So if Iman uh, brings his chest forward, okay. he has to be aware that his shifting in the axis isn't engaging the standing leg. That doesn't make me do anything. Because maybe he wants to close the embrace. If he only extends his free leg, he doesn't use his standing leg, that also doesn't do anything. So again, because I don't feel that anything's happening. So in order for me to be able to move, he has to be aware enough that what he's doing with his body, that he's using his standing leg, the leg that he's standing on, and that is the activation of this leg and movement of his axis forward, that makes me walk. So this is kind of like, I think, the idea about axis walking. Yeah? This is sort of one end of the spectrum where we use mostly the movement of the whole body, and in this type of movement, our legs just move under us. So in this type of movement, you don't really have a projection forward yeah. of any kind. There's no front line. We have a little bit of a back line in the forward step because our back leg, when it finishes the push, it stays longer in the back. Pushing through the toes elongates the back line. And for me, the feeling is, if I'm pushing to move forward, then in the back leg, I also have a push to move back. So if you notice, there's no actually projection of the leg forward. If anything, the legs are moving under the body, and the free leg is coming with the axis. So we're not thinking that the free leg has any special coordination other than having to receive the body and the landing. So when I push off, my, my former free leg receives the body, and then I push off again, and my next free leg receives the body. So we can say that, we want to first understand that we want to move more like a, a, a functional? Yeah, more, more, more functionally. More so. functional. And the idea of projection, this already creates something extra that you have to do, right? To be able to create this shape. Yeah. So this, ba this first initial type of movement of moving the axis is sort of on one end of the spectrum. On the other end of the spectrum, very, very far on the other end, is just pure projection. And that looks kind of like this. See, so we have almost no movement at all. First is really just the projection of the legs. 
the axis staying very still, and then from there, once we have this extension, only then we move the axis. And one more time, same thing. So we have the projection one more time. And then from there again, we move the axis. So these two ways of walking that are up separate sides ends of the spectrum, um, they have very different coordinations in terms of what the axis is doing. In the first one, the axis is moving almost steadily. And then the second one, it has a, almost like a stop for the projection, and then it moves. It has a stop for the projection, and then it moves. Now, to be able to create the projection, we can tell because it's, it's hard to uh, get you to, to do it, just for you guys to have an idea. It requires power, and pure power. And power comes from the idea of, like, imagine you're going to jump. So you're going to create a lot of energy against the, the ground and against yourself. You're going to use that energy to be able to explode. The only difference is that now I'm going to create that energy and I still create the same sensation in my body, the same energy, like if I'm going to jump, but I'm not going to accomplish the entire movement. I only want to extend. So you still have to create a little bit of direction, otherwise you don't know where you're sending that energy. You still have to send that energy. It's just that you do it in the space of your axis, and that sensation of doing it in the space of your axis makes it feel very, very compact. So this kind of walking is very, it's like very heavy in the body because you're creating and containing a lot of energy. And the coordination has to be correct. It's a lot of things that you coordinate besides knowing where your axis is. If you're in the front of the axis, your projection doesn't really work. So that's already something that you have to work on the axis. Then, if you cannot feel your followers, leg, which leg is standing, you cannot really have the idea of like, okay, I need to project her leg. Because you're supposed to feel when she extends the leg on the back and how much she extends. So it's a lot of components there. So for us, it's not one of the first thing that you learn to project. It's actually really hard to really do it correctly and do it for real. Not like she knows, she projects, I project, and then we walk. So we teach this very, very late. We only teach this to our intermediate advanced students um, in, in sort of simple ways. And then when they get, because it's also a question of physical capacity, you have to have physical energy to generate this because you're not making this energy against the other person. So we're not pushing, pushing. against each other. This is all internal energy which is created inside of your body and then you contain it inside of your own body. So it's almost like if I want to move my arm and I'm imagining there's something very, very, very heavy, like I'm moving it through a really heavy medium. Now imagine that on a whole body level. So it's very energy dynamic. So let's say those are sort of like two ends of the spectrum. Uh, only axis versus only power. So only axis, whole body. Whole body. Projection. So projection is pretty much only power. Now from here when we take a walk, the step, that's at the point that we move the axis. Projection is only power, and then we move the axis. Yeah? So having those two ends of the spectrum means that there's a lot of possibilities in between. So for us, there's no right or wrong way to walk. It's just a question of how you want to coordinate it. And how you want to combine power and axis movement. And depends on what you need. Depends on what you need and what you like. In terms of having toe versus heel, again, it has to be functional. If we need to move fast, um, just try walking like this really, really fast. Yeah, projecting. The idea of projecting is to also to be able to show again, when people start doing the projection, this, I, uh, I think, that I started in 1990s, somebody mentioned this to me, I cannot remember the name, but it comes from ballet dancers. Ballet dancers, they always tend the leg and then they walk. Right? So when ballet dancers came into tango, they started doing more of this projection thing. If you really look for old videos, people wouldn't extend the leg first. They might keep their feet in the ground and then move, but this is not a projection. In terms of a point that a point at the end. The foot, yeah. right? So um, for us, any way that you want to step, it's your choice. It just has to make sense. Uh, if you're going very fast, don't point and project because you're not going to be able to have a lot of speed. 
if you want to do something slow and the idea is that you want to show the shape and you want to make it really pretty, for me at least, this, this shape is prettier than this one. So, uh, if you want to show how precise you are, then yes, you know, go through the point. So, for us, there's really no right or wrong way to walk, walk. If you understand how to generate energy and how to move, um, how to move your axis, then you can shape the walk sort of however you want. Like for example, there is different ideas, and this is, again, people call it style. I guess you can say style, but if that's the only thing that you can do, I wouldn't consider style. It's kind of like a default. Right? So, a uh, long time ago, we took class with the, this guy, and he told us, bend your knees a lot. So, we used to bend this much, and then we used to walk like this. So, for us, for me, this makes no sense, on the sense that it looks like, I mean, if I choose it for the stylistic uh, look, it's okay. But, if I'm going to bend my knees this much, this normally means, that from here I'm going to use more power. When you see people that are stage dancers, they bend this much because what they want to create is to use their feet and their knees to literally bend and try to explode, like you want to jump, and we're going to use that energy to literally move. So a stage dancer would use that more because you want to make this your steps on the stage big enough that the last person on the last row can see it. So bending the knees that much, it really has to do with function. If you're social dancing, you don't need so much bend. Actually, when people get used, more used to using their ankles, mm -hmm. they start to use their knees a lot less, and they don't have so much bend. So we're not saying lock out your legs, no. because in a normal walk coordination, knees are bending and ankles are bending. This is normal. It's just that you don't need to bend so much. Um, bending doesn't make you more stable more grounded. or more grounded. Bending just makes you go lower. You're and bringing you your might body look, body down. You might look like you're more grounded because you're kind of going down, but the sensation is not the same. Yeah, so however it is that you want to, so we can show, we'll show you some other possible coordinations just for fun. I don't know if you want to do some stuff. I don't know. So again, you can bend a lot if you want, if it's a choice, but if you're not using it for me, you're not using it for what you need, uh, I wouldn't choose it. Then I, I can extend my legs completely, right? And it's okay. But then let's say if I really want to move fast, I, I wouldn't do this either. Yes, this kind of like makes no sense because I'm only moving my leg. I need to push a little bit. I need to bend a little more to give that sensation that I'm going to move more. Yes. Take a longer step. Some people they say they, they like this idea of, of bouncing. So some people they bend when they go and then they step. Right? They have a little breath. Right? Which, which can help you for different things depending on what you want. Right? So it's like you finding what, what is that that you're trying to do. Do you want to completely do this? Completely go here? Go in something in between? Whatever it is that you want to do, is the, uh, there is no right way. It's just, for us, you have to make sense. Why is that that you do it? So when saying, oh, I went to this teacher, you say, bend more. And I went to the other teacher, you say, bend less. And for this, it's like, that's it. That's have nothing to do with technique. That's just a, a, a stylistic choice. So what is important in terms of technique for walking? Uh, what's important is access. Because your axis determines how you affect the other person. Um, what's important is your standing leg, understanding that all of the energy is coming from, from there. And then the coordination that you're choosing in the moment for whatever it is that you want to express. So understanding how your free leg and your standing leg work together. So I know I remember there was a question about balance um, and what makes you balanced and how not to lose your balance and also how to work with your head. So balance has to do with opposition. Opposition is the extension of your body in space. So if I want to have good balance, I can't only have one energy direction. So for example, if Ivan stands up and he just bends his knees because he wants to be more balanced. Well, I think that that's gonna help. Or he thinks it's gonna help him. He's only putting energy down. There's no problem. I can take him off balance very, very easily. 
But now, if the arm pushes down and pushes up at the same time, so for me, I like to explain it like having two bodies. One body that's pressing down and one body, like a skin on the outside which pulls in and an inside still that skin that pulls out. The moment that he has that just up and down, he already becomes more stable. So now, if from that position, he has up, down, forward, and back, I push a little forward, Front I push body a little back, body. I push a little sideways, I push everywhere. I, I like to think like the ground, the ceiling, one wall, the other wall. And imagine when you're making a rotation. So that also you have to add these fire directions. So, so these kinds of things, this is what really makes you, you balanced. Um, is being aware that this extension comes in all directions and having an adaptive quality. Meaning that as you move through space, the energies in your body are adapting to the movement that you're doing to compensate for the directions or the forces that are being that are acting on you. Um, and the head is important, and a lot of people kind of have this head down. We will do. Um, I do. I have it down because for me, that gives me the feeling that I'm like putting energy towards my partner, but I'm balancing it well enough with the back that I don't actually move forward in, in axis. Um, sometimes people, when they don't have this back sensation, they lose, then the they lose the balance and the head comes forward. So a lot of the time the head and the chest coming forward has to do with this idea of, of the lead, that the lead is coming from the chest. Yeah. So a lot of the time we think, because the leading and the following, that we think that the receptors for leading and following are here. And so we tend to do this towards our partner. But the more you're aware of the totality of the body, in, in the lead and follow, then it's much easier to police yourself and take the back bones, the occiput bones in your head, and align them with your sacrum. So long as you can have that alignment, and kind of looks like, like this kind of posture, then that will really help you to prevent that. The other thing that will prevent the head drooping forward is if your pelvis comes forward. The more you keep your hips back, hips back, it, right. it makes you like a little teapot. Right, to create this. And then sometimes some people arch their back to compensate for, for that, and then the hips go forward. Yeah, so if Ivan brings his hips forward, his pelvis forward, that will sort of automatically bring mm. his, align his chest. And then if he stretches his ears like he's some kind of an animal, yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna help even more. So, um, yeah, so this is the sort of the, the walk section, how we think about walk. And why it's important. So for example, once let's say that we're doing the walk, the biggest problem is this, or, or the most important thing is this. How whatever you do your walk, you move the entire axis, you project first and then you move, you do a combination of it, right, or whatever else, the important thing is the takeoff and for now the landing. Eventually, the in between also determines how you're going to walk. But it's important that you can be on your axis in the beginning, and however it is that, that you go, right, on the end, you can be on your axis again. So, this will help you with a lot of things already. That does already help. So, for example, now, I'm being dancing like this, right, full axis. And then there is a moment of Isakala. It's like, okay, Isakala is not working, why is she not moving? Okay, I guess I have to do something extra. So then we start thinking of something extra. The arm, oh, I need to turn my chest. And it's like, no, 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 wait, let's take it from the walk. If in my walk is to move my axis, I move my axis, right? Now we are in this position to enter into Isakala. So what am I going to do? I'm not going to change the way I, I was walking. I'm going to also walk the same. Walk. So that transforming my way it causes the energy and the, the direction for her legs to move. So this happens all the time that we do a beautiful walk. Everything is in the right place. It's in the right place. Uh, and then we have to do something that is a little more complex than this. Right? Uh, let's say we have to do what? Ocho. And then it goes like this. So it's like you have to try to like decide, okay, however that you're gonna choose to walk for now, I will recommendation move your full axis first. If you're doing good the, the projection, think about how you're doing it. 
who try that your walk resembles on everything that you do. If you change it, right, it has to be a conscious decision why you're changing it. Because it's helping you to create more energy, it's helping you for a different angle, or whatever, but technically underneath you still have to that, do the same thing. So the most important technical points in walking, besides the axis and the standing leg, is the takeoff and the landing and making sure that your pelvis is in the right place, meaning that at the at the beginning of the movement that you're pushing your whole body, your your hips from the standing leg, and then when you land, that you actually land with your hips on top. A lot of the time, uh, when we walk, we keep the hips where they should be, but then when we start doing something more complex, the hips tend to stay back, they tend to lean back. And this creates a lot of problems. So that's sort of, if we can take any lessons from the walk or why walking is important, it's because it informs us how our bodies need to be organized, even in the case of doing more complicated things. So most of the time when we walk in a straight line, the body organization is relatively simple. We don't have a lot of rotations, the body is kind of more in a more, um, let's say, normal or more common or more habitual position when we just walk on the street. But when we start to turn, and considering the tango is like almost all turning all the time, you have to end, you have to, you have, to um, have this spiraling idea on top of the organization of the body, which is a normally linear. You have to have a spiral body. So that's also something that we get confused. And the best way to practice these spiral positions is to walk in a line, but in outside partner positions. That will really help you kind of understand how your body needs to be when you're doing rotated movements, because you will repeat those rotated movements in more complex things, like in turns, in sacadas, in anything that when you see you're like, wow, I can never do that but you don't realize that you can't do it because you're not consistently doing what you should be doing in your walk in this more complex thing. Yeah. So if you sometimes, there are moments that somehow you're trying to keep your walk how it is, but you have a more complex movement and somehow is not allowing you to do your normal walk, have nothing to do with your walk. It's more likely that have to do with something else in the movement that might be the geometry, more likely is the geometry, right? The relationship of the couple, which is pretty much the same thing, is it's just related. Like the angles. The angles. That you have towards each other or in your coordination. Yeah. So if we think that we have landing, simultaneous landings when we're walking, you should think about simultaneous landings when you're doing more complex things. Um, so my advice is don't walk just to walk. Use the walk as a training tool to understand what your body is doing and then try to apply those same principles in more complex movements. Can I show you the silly, silly example? Sure. That just came out of my head. Yeah. So for example, we've been uh, working on the walk, beautiful. So this is the walk, right? And we try to land there all the time. So now I want to enter into a saga. So I'm going to be outside partner. And then instead of doing this walk the same, a lot of the problems happens here. I end up either sinking on my head, let me move a little bit so you can see me, there. Somehow I feel I have no space here, right? So then I start changing this, now the angle is different, now she's a step farther from me, now we're going to enter into a turn, she's even farther from me, and I'm going to enter into Sakada, she's even farther from me, and then it's like, oh, I'm oh. Let's work on my Enroski, my Enroski is wrong. Let's fix it. And then you practice by yourself like crazy. Let me crank my upper body and then make the hips go. Okay, crank the upper body and hips go. Okay, now it's better. Let's try it again. No. The Enroski have nothing to do with everything that you did before. And the way I was practicing it was also incorrect. Right? So what I want to think about is that if in my walk is to bring my whole body on top of my foot, Yes? When I'm walking here outside partner, I have to still do the same thing. I still have to move my whole body. Then everything else, whole body. Then everything else is where it should be. And then you can make it work. So again, the problems on the more complex movements have nothing to do with, oh, they're more complex. And why they're more complex is just because they have more things that you need to coordinate, 
there are more geometries, there are more rotation, there are extra things that you have to keep doing in the same body walking. The hardest thing on walking is to always do it um, como se dice? Uh, consistently. consistently. To always do it the same on every single movement. Another example. Sarah, again? One second. It comes, so remember how we be moving our legs. So we move the whole axis, and you see always that there is a bend and then it's straight. A bend and it's straight. Right? That normally happens. Let's say we're doing that. Beautiful. I do some ochos. And then it's like, oh, let me do a barriga. And then I'm here. And then I'm here. And then I think of barriga. Ready? And. So it's like, oh, somehow, I don't know. It's not working. It's not working. Put your foot more against mine. So then it feels like I'm pushing your leg. Okay. It feels a little bit better. Turn to the crossing break. That's it. And it's like, hmm, okay, I guess we have to keep working on the barrida. And then you keep working on the barrida forever. And again, it's not a problem, the actual barrida. I mean, in this case, it is the problem of, I mean, it looks... The problem is here. It's here. But the problem is because I'm not thinking of walking. We say earlier that normally, by walking, we're doing, we're bending and we're straining. So look, naturally, if Isala takes a back step here, can you guys see it? Yeah, yeah. There, there you go. Look at what happened with this leg. Normally, bent and it's straight. And again, bent and it's straight. Just move the whole axis. We're not doing rotation. So, Doesn't matter. Right? Either the projection or the normal walk, there's yes. always a bending and straight. Right? Very good. And now for me, it's, it's the same thing. Let's say she's not there. I'm on the same position. I have to do bent and straight, bent and straight. So now, if we maintain the same idea, bend. And straight, bend, and straight. This and then being the mechanic of the barrier, which is again what? Just a normal walk. Yeah. Oh, can you get the. The what? We need a plug. Oh, the battery? Yeah. You keep talking? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much what we want to talk to you guys about today. Sort of. A little bit of an idea of what we think about walking, and then a little bit of an idea of why it's important to stay um, totally um, keeping the same principles. So I'm just checking through the questions. If we covered everything. Just in case we didn't miss anything. Yeah. Okay. So. The last question is about, so for us, um, the walking in open embrace and closed embrace is absolutely the same, and we don't have a sensation of a different feeling. We're posturally the same. The only difference is that the, whether our feet are closer to each other or our feet are further apart. Also the open embrace. Yeah, you shouldn't have any problems in closed embrace if you first engage with the standing leg. So ankles happens right away. Using your foot to try to, there, push, like you're trying to like move Like a little forward. catapult. Forward. Instead of only moving the body and then the foot. Yeah. Okay, let's cool that. <laughs> okay, very good. So that's sort of what we wanted to talk about. Um, do you guys have any questions for us? Yeah, Let us know. know. We'll be here another eight minutes until 9.20 waiting. So just write us in the live chat and we'll try to address your questions directly. Yeah. Loading, loading, loading. What's loading? <laughs> the questions. Yeah. What do we have? Okay. Yeah. Mm. In the meantime, what, what we've been doing? Uh, watching, today we were watching Circus Soleil. It was beautiful. Yeah. We have watched it before live, but there are some shows we haven't seen. I think they're doing some special performances of maybe upcoming shows, and they're posting on Facebook, yeah, uh, so on uh, YouTube, YouTube so, so there are some like hour-long um, show snippets, yes. which are really cool. What else? We've been trying to go to the park and walk a little bit. It's really nice to get out of the house. 
Ah, uh, somebody. Let me see. Could you show the open and close embrace? Yeah. Uh, walking or just there? Yeah, we'll show it to you in walking. <laughs> so there are different ideas of what close embrace is. Um, Means? Universe. <laughs> um, so for us, open embrace is this. No, I mean, adjust the camera. This is open. Yes, you can see on the other side. Ivan has very long arms. Yes. So it's very easy for us to get very open. Yes, it's really always been my other problem. You can see, you see where my knee is? Look, you can <laughs> extend my arms. See, they're almost touching my arms. Yeah, look, his knee is right here. That's pretty right. crazy. For me, it's like there. So, yeah. so it's always arms. our big problem trying to keep an open embrace but closer. So then, Another people consider close embrace uh, to this. Which is like a V. It creates a tiny V in the body. Okay, for all open. Yeah, let me get closer. Yeah, some people like the hold here. Yeah, it's the other side. Yeah, the only problem with this is that it brings a little bit of the shoulder forward. Right? So make you so you have to try to correct it. Yeah. To keep it there. It's hard. This is also considered close embrace for some people. For us, it's still open. Yeah. And then close, close embrace is chest to chest. We're actually touching. Completely frontal, as much as we can. Yeah. Here. Here's the same. Yeah. So if we walk in open embrace. Uh, that's my problem. Right? And the other way. Or are you walking close to this? No, no, no. close. Yes, it doesn't change the position of our bodies. How is the axis the same? The axis position for me is the same. Uh, so, if you see the alignment of my, if you see the alignment of my body, when I move forward, unless I go on my toes, I'm still aligned the same way. It's just I'm in a different place over my axis. Mm -hmm. So I don't lean to be closer. I bring my knees to be closer. So I'm in flats now. In heels, that position would be already a little bit more there. So you are more on the front of your axis, you're saying? Yeah, I'm a little bit more towards the front of my axis, but I try to be as central as possible. Yes, what she means uh, that it's nothing different on the, on the axis, we mean on the vertical part of it. We don't lean to create any distortion. We just move either to the back of the axis more or the front of the axis, keeping the same straight position. And even if I'm here, in this place, I'm still pressing my heels down. So I still have weight down through my shoe. Yeah, imagine you have the heel, right? Yeah, imagine that I have the heel. Okay. Vineshka, Sarah, you were talking about head position. You said you have the head more forward for containing the energy. Why does it help you? It doesn't help me. No. For me, it's, it's just like when, it's, it's like an emotional more, thing. Like, you see, when, when somebody wants to embrace somebody a little more, like, it's like, See, you <laughs> do a little bit of that, so it has that kind of like sensation. Yeah, like when I'm feeling it a lot, I'm like, oh, I feel like a like a, a like an animal that's gonna devour yeah. him. So if my feelings. If you make like, something, let's say, more traditionally traditionally looking, it will be imagine at the time there was a lot of restriction of like, you know, you're dancing with this woman, but you cannot really show it to everybody. Look, I love this woman, or whatever. I want this woman. So they, everything it was a more formal, right? So it's like we're here, and that's why the embrace of close, this close embrace, it did not happen at that time. Because there's no contact with the... No, that was Jesus. Yeah. So... Um, so close embrace used to be this. It used to be this, see? And of course, more upright just here, because I don't want to come into her space. Yeah. Right? So if we do something very energetic, very, uh, like, um, fast and like that's very demanding physically like in a choreo I try to be as vertical as possible because I have I have a better position but if we're doing something slow and like stretchy and elastic then somehow naturally like it all goes 
here. But uh, if I imagine the inside of my body is still straight. So it's almost like the shape is here, but the real axis, the real power connection is, is vertical. That's why over time, uh, you'll see a lot of the couples, they will always tell you that, you know, when you have a lot of experience, it can help you to manage different positions. For us, we always explain in the beginning that everything has to be as straight as possible to understand how things work. Once that you understand your body and the other person's body, and you can keep this vertical position all the time, then of course over time you can change that and be smart about when you change it. For and have example, any shape that you want, really. Like for example, a lot of people, then when they walk, they like this sensation, this look of leaning more and this long extension back. Right? But they really know that from there, I try to turn to the same digit. So let's say I go outside corner and I try to turn. And then I stay in this shape. I'm really far from each other. It's so impossible. I might accomplish one sagada, but my engrossed, let's say, my turn and musket. But after that, I won't be able to accomplish it. It's really hard. We're really far from each other. So many of the really good people do. Because this is a choice, they manage, see, how we, we fix to be straight. Now I'm straight, close to her, and then I want to walk again. Duck. Then we do it again. Right? But this is a choice again, and you need to try to see. That takes a lot of, I mean, like, that takes a lot of work to try to understand how you can get closer to the embrace. That's why there are so many workshops about. Changing the embraces, Changing the embraces and the distances. Yeah. So actually, um, you know, something like this is not actually necessary for social dancing. If you want to have like uh, good social dancing quick, it's better to work on in on yourself in a way that you do everything consistently with your axis, because actually axis changing inside of a step is very very complex. Really, really it takes complex. a really long time, and it just for social dancing, it's just simply not necessary. Okay, guys, so Wait, do we have I think we're at the end of oh. our vlog. Thank you so much for being with us and for paying attention and for your questions. And if you have any other questions, um, just write um, in this vlog uh, in the comments. And next week, we'll do another one. And next week, I want to talk about turning. What do you think about that? I don't know. <laughs> okay, everybody, have a good night. Hopefully you've eaten something tasty and are going to sleep or going to watch some nice movie or something, but it's been a pleasure. That's not true. We're going to have rehearse right now. What? Yeah. No. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.